It seems like everyone is creating motion design tunnels at the moment. The furrow, motion hatch, ordinary folk. So let's talk about three ingredients for a dope tunnel animation. Number one, the dope tunnel. Number two, dope things inside your tunnel. Number three, something dope at the end of your tunnel. We're gonna focus on number one, but if you stick around, you may get some extra sprinkles and maybe even a cherry on top. So let's begin inside our tunnel comp where I have a huge outer rectangle and a small inner square. I thought it would be cool to have our tunnel expand inward before we move through it. So to do that, let's drop in both scale and rotation keyframes at the start and then again at one and a half seconds. Let's scale up the first keyframe so that it covers the comp, change the rotation of the second keyframe to 90 degrees, move to around 2 seconds and 4 frames ahead, change the rotation to 180 and scale it up again to cover the frame. Now we just need to easy ease the middle keyframes and in the graph editor adjust them both to around 80 to 90% influence and that gives us this animation. But we want our rotation to be a bit more continuous so let's select our rotation, go back into the graph editor, double click on the middle point on the graph and select this checkbox. Now we can lift this up and drag this right handle in to remove any ease and we end up with a lovely continuous rotation which just looks much better. Now we can use the inner square as a mat for the outer rectangle and invert the mat to make sure we're creating a transparent opening. We're going to style this properly later but for now to see what we're doing let's use layer styles to add a stroke to our outer rectangle. Now let's pre-compose both these layers and call it tunnel pre. This next trick is a really interesting way to set up an animation, so I'm excited to show it to you. For starters, let's add in a null and name it control. We need to add two properties to this, so let's add in a slider control, like this, duplicate it and call the first one rotation offset and the second one spacing. And hopefully just these names are getting you a little excited for what's coming next. So let's duplicate the tunnel layer and open up the scale and rotation properties on both layers. We're going to add some expressions to these properties, but don't be scared because I'm going to be here to hold your hand the whole way through. So firstly, let's select our control panel layer and click this lock icon so that this panel doesn't change when we select another layer. Now let's alt click the scale stopwatch to add our first expression. And the easiest way to achieve what we need is to type space and equal sign and then pick up the scale value of our first tunnel layer. This brings in a line of code automatically and we just need to change the text within the brackets to index plus one. And that's going to tell After Effects to return the scale value of the layer below. Now we can multiply this with the asterisk symbol and pick whip our spacing slider and add a semicolon to the end of our line of code. Our spacing is zero, so of course our scale is now changed to zero as well. But if we change our spacing to one, we get back up to 100% scale. And now if we change this again to something like 1.5, you'll see that the value has changed to 150. And if we duplicate this layer a bunch of times, you'll see that each layer scales up exponentially by looking at the scale of the layer below and multiplying that by 1.5. And the beauty of this setup is that you can change your spacing easily by simply changing your spacing slider. Let's quickly remove our duplicates so that we can do something similar with rotation. So let's add an expression and type r equals and pick up the rotation of our other tunnel layer. Change this to index plus one and this time we're going to add with the plus sign and pick up our rotation offset slider and finish with a semicolon. Again, we can duplicate this a bunch of times and now we can change the rotation offset to get an effect we like. Before we move on, let's continuously rasterize our tunnel layers by clicking this button on all of our pre-comps to remove the blurriness we had before. Now let's offset our layers by two frames. I'm gonna use motion tools for this, but you could just move these manually. And this gives us a really interesting animation already, but let's add to this by animating the rotation offset. Let's drop in a keyframe at the start, move to one and a half seconds, change it to negative 10, and then just around where the squares start to disappear, let's change it to 10. Now let's easy ease our middle keyframe and in the graph editor, do something similar to our previous animations with about 80 to 90% influence. And this time in the value graph, it's adjusted like this, so there's a bit more of a continuous motion. We can also play around with the offset of the middle keyframe to get something we like. Now that we have our base animation, the next step is styling. But before we get to that, if this has been eye-opening or interesting so far, it really helps if you let me know by tapping that like button. The great thing about this setup is that everything we do inside one of these tunnel comps gets applied to all of them. So let's get inside the pre-comp and to start, we're gonna add a gradient fill. 
We need three colors so we can add another color in by clicking right here and here as well if you need opacity for your gradient. However, I already know what we need so let's skip to those colors and now we have a sexy gradient to make our animation pop. So let's change the type to a radial gradient and you'll see we have this handle which allows us to change the length of the gradient. We're going to animate this so let's add a keyframe to the endpoint at the location of our second keyframe. Now at the start somewhere around here and at the end let's drag this really far out so that the yellow will be the dominant color. Let's easy ease the middle keyframe and in the graph editor give it a strong ease on either side. Lastly we need to remember to turn off the layer style stroke we created earlier. And this is what the animation of the gradient looks like and this is what it looks like if we go back into our main comp. Now clicking on one of the comps let's add the layer style drop shadow. Change the color by eye dropping one of these pink colors and dropping the brightness down. Then let's change the distance to 0 and the size to 100. Now we can copy and paste this layer style to the rest of the comps and that's pretty much it for our sexy tunnel animation. But let's talk about the sprinkles I mentioned. For starters I added a wiggle master to the scene and if you don't know what that is I have a short and long form video on the topic but to cover it briefly I have a null called wiggle master which has a wiggle expression applied to the position but I set up the expression so that I can control both of the wiggle properties with these two sliders. I set the frequency to 15 and then keyframe the amount from 0 to 5 and now if we parent all the tunnel layers to this null we get this camera shake effect which makes the whole scene much more dramatic. Then in the tunnel pre there is a scatter effect applied to the outer rectangle and animated according to the size of the gradient and this adds some lovely texture. And remember anything you do in this comp automatically applies to the rest so you can do some really interesting things with this functionality. This for example. Next I pre-composed everything in the tunnel comp and called it tunnel pre, pre I guess. Then I added a circle that is parented to a null that is simply rotating with an extra keyframe with a bit of ease to slow it down in the middle. And then I animated the scale and position so that it just scales down and moves towards the center. I also animated some fast box blur to fake some depth of field. Then I dropped in an adjustment layer with a fast box blur except I added a mask, set it to subtract and feathered it to blur the edges of the comp. Then I created an inner glow effect which is actually just a circle which is scaling up with a fast box blur and then I used a duplicate of the tunnel pre pre as a mat. I also have a white light solid which is using the tunnel pre pre as an inverted mat but I scaled it up a bit and animated a fast box blur effect then I animated the opacity of the white solid to bring it on. And that's it. And the best thing about this tunnel is that it creates so much energy that you can match cut into the most satisfying eruption. And you know how we feel about satisfying eruptions on this channel. And the cherry on top is that I'm giving you my eruption for free. Wait my eruption scene for free in the project files linked below. I know you're a supportive person who really appreciates these free tutorials and would jump at the chance to show that support. Well, right now the easiest way to do that is to grab the project file mega pack which not only gives you the project file for this tutorial but every other project file in one convenient package. Your support is much appreciated and at the same time the value in these project files increases your motion, XP, 